Hello everyone, welcome back. So, this time we're going to talk about a very important property. It's called the quality. It's a simple thing, it's simply the ratio of the mass of vapor to the total mass of the mixture. Now what do I mean by that? Well, when I have, you know, some container, I'm going to have some sort of that part of this gas and some of it that's liquid. And when we're determining the properties, we need to know how much is one and how much is the other. So it's really easy to calculate. If I know that I have 50% vapor and 50% um, water, then my quality is just going to be equal to 0.5. If I you know, heat it up and I get now 75% vapor and 25% um, water, or sorry, liquid water, then I'm going to have a quality that's equal to 0.25. And I think it's kind of, or put this, 0.75. My bad, my bad, sorry. And I think it's kind of strange. Why are we favoring vapor? Well, I'll get to that later on. Don't worry about that. that we'll come back to that. But for now, just remember that it's the ratio of vapor to um, liquid water. And it's always between 0 and 1, every single time. OK, now how do I calculate it? Well, it's not too hard. I have a nice little equation right here. There we are. OK, so what is the equation? Well, you need to have, know a property one of the properties that are going to help you figure out where you are along this line. And the reason for that is because if I know the pressure, let's say I know the pressure, it's um, 1,500 kilopascals. I also know the temperature because when you are within this region right here, um, for every pressure, it's always going to be the saturation temperature. And for every temperature, it's always going to be the saturation pressure. They are completely connected. If I know one, I know the other. And because of that, they are dependent properties. They are dependent properties. If they are dependent, I cannot use them to figure out where I am. At least I can't use both of them to figure out where I am. I need two. They don't count as two. They count as one. So I need a second property. And so that can be your specific volume. It can be your entropy. It can be your enthalpy. It can be your internal energy. There's a lot of things you can use. And so long as I know one of those, I can figure out where I am along this line. Am I over here? Am I over here? Where am I? Now, why do I need to know that? Why do I have this quality? Well, we learned earlier that when I'm right here, this I'm a saturated liquid. And when I'm right here, I'm a saturated vapor. I'll go ahead and draw them just for fun. There you go. Now, anywhere in between, I am simply a mixture. I'm not some magical thing. It's just saying I'm adding the properties of a saturated liquid 50% of the way and adding properties of saturated vapor 50% of the way, or some other ratio. And so this quality is simply saying how much of the properties are saturated vapor and how much are saturated liquid. So when it's zero quality, it's saturated liquid. When it's one, it's saturated vapor, and it can never be higher than those two. It's always one or the other. So when I find a property somewhere in the middle, that is the averaged property, the average property of the vapor and the liquid that's there. And if I know one of those properties, I can solve everything else. Because while this equation looks like crazy because there's a lot going on here, it's actually fairly simple. All of these values are found from the tables. If you know the pressure or the temperature, you know all six of those values. You already know them. They're done. As a note, VFG isn't actually in your textbook, but it would just be equal to VG minus VF. That is simply saying the set, um, specific volume of a saturated vapor minus specific volume of a saturated liquid. That's all it is for all of them. OK, so I know all six of those. So then I just need one of the other properties to be able to solve this. And usually for us to begin with, we're going to be using specific volume to find our, so find our way. How? Well, a lot of times the problem will say something like this. You have a mass of 10 kilograms of water inside of a container that is 2 meters cubed. OK, well, I know how to calculate. Um, specific volume, that's simply equal to V is equal to volume over mass, which is equal to 2 divided by 10. So specific volume is equal to 0.2. OK, so I have it. Now I would look at my properties. I would find VF. And maybe it says that VF is 0.1. And VG is 1. I'm making it easy to know myself, OK? I can then figure out what my quality is. So my quality in that case would be x is equal to what I calculated, 0.2, minus what I looked up, 0.1, 
all over another thing I looked up, 1. And so in this case, my quality would be 0.1. Pretty simple, not terrible. So it means it's 10% vapor and the rest is a saturated liquid. 10% vapor and the rest is a saturated liquid. So it's mostly liquid in that case. OK. So this is an important thing. You're going to be using it a lot. But I promise you, you have all these in your tables. You don't have to calculate those. You just need to calculate one other property to figure out where you are and get the rest. Now, another thing to be thinking about is if you are in the compressed liquid region, so over here, or the superheated vapor region over here, temperature and pressure are no longer connected. That doesn't happen anymore. They are completely separate, which means if I know the temperature and pressure, they are two independent properties, and you can use them to define a state. But I can still use enthalpy. I can still use specific volume. I can still use internal energy. I just have more now when I'm in those two ranges. Another thing is if you're calculating your quality and you realize that your specific volume is somehow bigger than your specific volume of a saturated vapor, then you are in the superheated region. If it is smaller than a saturated liquid, then you are compressed. And another way you can look at that is if you somehow get a quality that is either negative or a quality that is more than one, then you are not in the saturated mixture region and you shouldn't calculate quality. Um, you are in either superheated vapor or the compressed liquid region. Okay, and the last little detail I'm going to give you, because you're all asking why in the world do we call it quality and why is saturated vapor quality? It's all because of power generation. So if I'm in a, um, you know, a jet or in a turbine, typically what I have is some sort of, you know, I'm going to put flames in the middle. I have a compressor right here. It makes the pressure go up. I have flames in the middle. They heat it up. I have a turbine that then spins and produces power. The thing is, a turbine is kind of like a fancy fan. And if you have a water droplet in your vapor, that water droplet acts kind of like you throwing a rock through a window. Okay, It's not fun. We don't want that Shh. broken glass, broken glass, broken glass. Um, because that water droplet is hard when things are spinning at really, really fast velocities. You know this because there's probably been times where you've been outside, it starts raining, you don't have an umbrella, and it hurts when the rain hits you because the wind is blowing it so hard that the raindrops are hitting you and it really feels like kind of like being pelted with gravel. So think about that, but really, really, really fast because these turbine blades spin at thousands of rotations per second. They're going, sorry, thousands of rotations per minute. They're going crazy. And so when the water droplet hits, it's bad. So for a turbine, high quality means mostly vapor. And vapor is not hard. Vapor is acting like air, and it's just blowing over the turbine, blowing over a fan, just like it's supposed to. So that's why high quality things, in our terms, um, have mostly vapor. Okay, thank you all so much. I'll see you all next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.